Welcome to Adventures in Lollygagging. Hopefully you can hear us. Hopefully you can see us. If you can't, that sucks. Uh, anyway, uh, hi. We're down two Marines tonight, but we're 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 pushing through, uh, and we're gonna see if we could be down even more Marines next time. So I'm just gonna see how quickly I could just TPK everybody who's left here. Uh, which is yeah, should be fine. It should be fine. I hear TPKs are all the rage in alien games. They are. <laughs> so we're gonna try to get it, get that taken care of. Uh, we'll dive into the submarine pretty soon. We'll give everyone a chance to say who they are and stuff that they do on the interwebs. Uh, let's do that first. Uh, so we got brand new crew. This is our second episode with our, uh, our, our Marine crew. We've already ripped off one of their arms, scared two of them away from ever playing with us again. Uh, it's a great start. Uh, so, uh, say who you are, say who you're playing. Uh, let us know what your specialty is as well. Uh, if you're, if you're using the Colonial Marines books, which are shipping, uh, we keep seeing them pop up. I haven't gotten my physical copy yet, but uh, soon, hopefully. Uh, but uh, what's your specialty for your Marine? And uh, yeah, and I'll do the summary. So just just dive into that. So Melissa, you're up first. Okay, I'm Melissa with Adventures in Lollygagging. Uh, you can catch us here on Mondays um, playing some games and then on Fridays doing Delta Green and Saturdays doing Worlds Without Number. Uh, in this game, I am playing Master Sergeant Margot Barrett. Um, so not only is she in charge, she is a CBRN specialist. Um, we were actually talking before the stream that I apparently forgot to mention last week that I only have one eye and I have an eye patch. So yeah. part of my uh, description that somehow didn't come up last week. So yeah. People lose eyes in our games for some reason, even <laughs> though you opted into it. I remember our basin game where Bert lost two eyes. Yeah. <laughs> he only had two and he <laughs> lost them both different times too. It was great. Uh, okay. Uh, let's keep it going. Uh, our two, our two like officers in charge, our highest ranking officers are still here. Chuck's dying, but uh, Chuck, who, who, who are you and who are you playing? I'm, I'm Chuck. Uh, I run Defenders of Cobalt. Important thing is Wednesday, we're kicking off a new Pathfinder campaign. And you can catch Jeff. Am I pointing the right way? I don't fucking know. Jeff and Jeremy are going to be there. It's going to be great. It's fucking great. Uh, and I am playing Staff Sergeant Eric Koenig. I am the uh, dedicated marksman. And yeah, I got uh, I got punched real hard. <laughs> you got Temple of Doomed, I believe. Is the... I <laughs> That's it's our new right term. Way, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't remember who said that first. I can't remember who it was, but somebody said it first, and I love that phrase now. So we're just going to Temple of Doom. I got uh, Temple of Doomed. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we're going to dive in really quickly to that injury, too, because uh took another look at it, and we got some stuff that we have to take care of. So Chuck might have to be making a new character tonight uh, anyway. while we play. It should be fun. Yeah. Uh, we got Jen. Jen's not here tonight, unfortunately, but uh, you can go ahead and check her out over on the Pixel Prowler, uh, her channel there, if that's not working. There it goes. So you can catch the link in the chat. Uh, but bottom row, Adam is here. Adam, who are Hello. you? Hello. My name is Adam, and I'm playing Abbott, the artificial person who is a hospital corpsman. Um, and to plug my plug, uh, Gurren Perla Studios just created the Cambian Ancestry uh, it's an ancestry where the princes of chaos got jealous of the gods of order and decided they wanted to have their own um, uh, creatures with free will, and then were surprised when they didn't choose them. So now you can play something that's sort of demon infused if you want to, and uh, you could go check that out for a Zweihander game. Awesome. Uh, Matt also is not here. Uh, we uh, I ripped off an arm for the second time in like three sessions alien uh but uh you can check matt other places uh this is my new favorite uh this is my new favorite channel command it's old maddie two arms you can find old maddie two arms on tuesdays <laughs> and thursdays over at Garblad games <laughs> and sundays on freely published channel tomorrow oh, night beautiful tomorrow night he's uh. running deadlands I'm supposed to be in that game, but if he hears about this, I might not be in that game anymore. And then Thursday of this week, uh, Blazes Dark, so you go check that out. And I don't know what he's running on Free League this week, so we'll find out some other time. Uh, and then finally, uh, Jeremy, what's up? Ah, yeah, I'm going to be playing uh, Corporal Hecla W. Claymore, I'm the Salt Marine, the Breacher, I'm here to do whatever Mama Bear says to do. Yeah, that's about it. Just a big, dumb you know, AW, uh, and uh, yeah, and pretty much I'm just an adopted ne'er-do-well that hangs out with people that are cooler than me. 
uh, yeah. All right. So, yeah, we started new chapter, new crew. We're doing the Marine thing. Where uh, it's the same, our same Cinders of Heaven universe that we've been doing for several months now. Uh, but uh, new story, new people, new mission objectives and stuff. Uh, if you've never watched any of our stuff before, it's fine. You can probably go back and fill it in. We, we do tend to revisit some places here and there, but you can pick up basically at any point. Uh, but this crew is a specific, uh, it's a very special crew. They're not just not just any old Marines, but they're like a special forces crew that, uh, that they fly around on a fancy, stealthy ship called the Chum Bucket. Uh, that, was, uh, <laughs> that was Jeremy's contribution. Uh, so we've had the Hot Pocket and we've had the Chum Bucket. Those are mm-hmm. very, very careful when you say the name of that, uh, the name of that ship. <laughs> and uh, they were tasked uh, by their commanding officer out of Marine Space Force, Eridani, uh, a General Alexander Reddick, uh, who uh, who has sent them to a familiar to the to the stream location, but not familiar to the actual characters. As you're you are sent to GL four eight eight J dash A, which is a moon uh, where Hyperdyne Systems. Uh, has has a has a factory a uh, a synthetics factory where they've been doing some stuff, uh, and uh, there have been some reports that came out that uh, was of a, of an alarming nature of synthetics kind of taking over or showing violence or all sorts of weird things here and there. There was a commercial ship called the Radamanthus that was last seen there, radioed in to Anchor Point Station, and then never arrived mysteriously, uh, and then. Even more alarming was the fact that after some of these reports of like synthetic uprising, uh, it became more common knowledge to the Marine Space Force, Eridani. Uh, they sent out a, uh, a ship uh, called the USS Asteria uh, to take care of whatever the hell's going on on this moon. Uh, but uh, that ship has since gone missing. And uh, that's, 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 that's bad because it's like a quarter of a billion dollar ship and uh, it's a lot of money. So you all have been sent then as a special forces unit, uh, very uh, you know veteran folks, uh, to do a handful of things. Uh, I've gone ahead and I've simplified some of the mission objectives for you all, and I've kind of shown it to you now. So hopefully those of you that are playing can see it pretty easily. But the basic gist of it is that you are here to ascertain what the hell's going on on this moon, uh, to put down the synths if you have to, if, that's, if these reports of violent synths are true. You're also supposed to ascertain the whereabouts of the USS Hysteria, recovering the the ship and the crew, uh, which had something like 40 Marines, Colonial Marshals, and other support staff. And a little third objective that you had was to dig into the Hyperdyne Systems databases because your 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 general that you all all work for thinks that some some fancy and weird stuff is going on. So you all approached. You came here. You uh, some radio blackout stuff going on. It was kind of screwing things up. You saw that there was a, a vessel in orbit. You investigated. Boy, did that turn out to be a mistake. Uh, it was an orbital lifter, just the kind that is basically used for suborbital loading. Kind of takes basically cargo either off a ship that can't do planet fall and brings it down to the surface, or it takes stuff from the surface and brings it up to the to the or- up to orbit for ships that can't make planet fall. And uh, as as Koenig and Hutch went and did a little spacewalk and investigated, they found live synthetics. Uh, one of them was hidden in the cab, along with the dead body of a Marine. And then more started to break free from a few, uh, a few of these shipping containers. All hell broke loose. Uh, Hutch's arm broke off somehow. And, uh, and Koenig uh, got, uh, got punched in the stomach really, really, really hard. And uh, we're gonna pick up a little while later. You guys are you guys are in the process of entering Atmo. You've got that 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 young gun, that pilot, Lewis Forrester, taking you all down. Uh, but we need to address something first. We need to address old Koenig, who's got a little bit of a tummy ache. Uh, you've got a ruptured intestine, right? I do. It hurts real bad. So. Uh, my guts haven't hurt this bad since the last time I ate my ex-wife's chili. <laughs> <laughs> I hope Koenig doesn't die. Uh, 
But if it does, it does. So picture we're in the mid lab of our ship as we're entering as we're entering Atmo. Uh, we can see the sedated body of uh, of Dexter, Corporal Dexter Hutch Hutchinson, uh, arm fresh, freshly hewn. And uh, but he seems to be patched up and is out of danger of death at the very least. But Koenig, however, is writhing in a little bit of pain as his stomach has got a big, uh, big old hole in it. And there's blood gushing out and got to be careful of sepsis and all that kind of stuff. So we need to make a roll here. Abbott, you have to make a medical roll. You're in the med lab. You have plus two from a med kit against a cuz basically a ruptured intestinal injury is treated like a disease with a virulence rating of 6 which means you have to uh got to beat that with your your medicine roll there abbot is so anybody question, yeah is is there any way that i can like command him to do this well or something to try to assist sure why the hell not that sounds good again you're just going to get in there and back seat surgery just going to remind him the importance of keeping everyone healthy and Oops. upright okay what so meaning, sorry, oh, sorry i was meaning I to manipulate that. that first because of the i was used to forbidden lands where you you hit the button and then it brings up, up the menu yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's okay Oops. uh do you want to push that there uh uh margo uh, you were unsuccessful in your command yes okay go ahead all right, you got go. one success, so you'll give a boost. Uh, I, I, I mean, is there anything that Claymore could potentially do here to help that makes sense? Would you think, Jeremy? Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay to say no. It's totally okay to say no. Uh, not really. Other than belittle him and hold him still. Stop squirming. Stop being such a baby. Listen, my name ain't Duncan. I ain't no damn donut. Someone fix this hole. Uh, Claymore, roll a manipulation test as you try to basically browbeat him into submission. Be careful who you let fist you from now on. That's what your mom said. <laughs> okay. Well, that's I right. Don't you don't got one. Does <laughs> that so, make it better or worse? I don't know. You get one die for manipulation. <laughs> Gosh. I'm an emotional cripple. Don't Do talk a, about my mommy. Do you want to push that? Oh, God. No. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to go sit in the corner and die somewhere. All right. I think you have, uh, Adam, I think you've got, what, a total of plus three from a med kit from Barrett. Uh, I can't really think of anything else. I re Claymore, I respect your enheartening attempt at some banter before we do something this serious. You just appreciate it. Shut up, Toaster. I'm not talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. And he can't Please push, too. To. That's the bad part. He can't push. Please try to hold still. I'm the holding hold still. The more you I'm hold still, the better. I'm holding still. Look, I got a hole in me. That's low Very franken well. fruit. My bad. Very well. No, oh, no. Okay, so uh, basically, you're not dead. This is a slow kill. Uh, okay. So this isn't the thing that kills you outright. But what's going to happen is you become sick. Uh, and becoming sick is, first of all, you're going to take a point of damage. I'm going to assume all of you were able to, like, kind of heal up and stuff. So just take a point of damage. So you see you'll be down one point of damage. Uh, we okay. kind of did this. We did this slightly out of order. It was my fault. But uh, we'll just catch it up now. And uh, what this also means, if you look at the injury i put the disease thing in there um when sick you cannot recover your health so i'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt of saying you started this at full health and so you're down one yeah. now and at the start of each shift you have to do another sickness roll another one of these rolls and every time you fail you take another point of damage and if you're broken while you're sick you have to make a second sickness roll at the end of every shift. And if you fail that one at the end of a shift, you die. Okay. So you're around oh for a bit. You're good for tonight, wow. probably. Maybe, so, yeah, I'll, I'll try and make it through the session. I think you could make it through the session. How much health oh, do you have to uh, mess two. with here? <laughs> <laughs> two. I had three, now I'm down to two, so yeah. Listen, just get a, 
big ass cork and just stick it in me. I'll be fine. My ex wife has a giant collection of corks because she's a fucking wino. A cork is not uh, sterile. It's not. I, I wouldn't recommend it. Well, However, I can I can procure some form of uh, plastic that I can put inside. Sure, just saran wrap me. It'll be great. Keep everything in place. Now, that's it. I will say one other thing. You guys have a med bay, which isn't a very complex. Like you, you don't have a very complex equipment. You don't have an auto dock or anything like that. Had you had one, it would probably be better. Like if there was a surgical bay, this probably could go a lot smoother. But because you guys you know, you have you have okay medical services, but not great medical services because it is a small, sleek, stealthy ship. So it's not as robust as uh, you know one of the big old, you know, one of the bigger Conestoga frigate classes, stuff like that are. So he's not, you know, if you can find something, you know, it's possible. Maybe even the Asteria, if you find, might even have, if you were to find that, or who knows? You know, who knows? We'll see. So anyway, now that that's taken care of, Barrett, you're back up on the you're back up on the bridge, as the pilot uh, Lewis Forrester uh, is you know moving the ship down into uh, into into orbit. Now you have some basic info already about the planet. Um, you guys have some sort of understanding of the general layout. I'm going to go ahead and switch this over. So you can see that you guys have an understanding of like the different, like where the compounds are, the various things, you know, that there's a central compound, uh, like in the middle of a kind of a lengthy valley, um, that, uh, that Hyperdyne has set up kind of dormitory for their workers. Um, but you also know that there's a refinery site, there's a factory site, there's a series of landing pads. Um, you've been told that there are kind of underground tunnels that connect some of these sites because the atmosphere is so thin and toxic that spending any amount, even just a couple minutes without uh, Enviro Sudan could be fatal. So you also know that there there's construction underway for other things. And so there's various degree, you know, various degrees of, of completion on some of those sites. Uh, so he's coming. So as as the pilots bringing down in, as Abbott is working on on Koenig, Barrett, you have to make a decision on. And Claymore, you can be there as well, I suppose. Um, where do you want to go? Do you want to do some sort of? So he just kind of looks up to you, like, "What are your orders? Where where are we landing? Where am I going? Do you want me to to scout around? What what is it you want him to do?" Now, can I ask in relation to this map that we're looking at, mm -hmm. where was the signal? Where was the what? Didn't we have a signal that we were? Oh yeah, uh, you know that. I mean, you didn't have it to like perfect uh, perfect specificity, but you think that there is a signal uh, coming from the compound area. Okay. Well, um... <laughs> can you ramp a spaceship? God damn it, Jeremy. <laughs> Given, given what we just saw on this ship, I think it's best to take a wide berth and go in with some caution. So I would say if you can uh, get us landed over by uh, the west area by sea. I am better with observation than contact. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen Mama Bear? The beep boop. Oh, look at you. I can't oh. look at anything, apparently. I don't have a real mama, so I don't want to let mama bear down. Oh, thanks. I accidentally muted myself. Uh, okay. Uh, so, oh my goodness. So we got a com tech from uh, from Claymore as they're coming. They're coming down. 
and they're trying to get a better f- as they're getting closer and closer to the area and if there's anything they can kind of pick up kind of like a scouting pass uh just excited to find synths to kill so i'm, I'm motivated i'm so proud of claymore that i'm gonna sh- i'm gonna give you two pieces of information because you get two successes while barrett is freaking out you notice uh a couple things as you're as as Forrester is sweeping in with the ship. One that it looks as though of the three main building sites, the refinery, the factory, and the compound, both the refinery and the compound seem to be under power, uh, and the refinery uh, seems to not. But because you've got two successes, you also pick up an additional like because you, you're maybe you're even. Looking at your signals, looking at the looking at the the console, looking out like viewing portals as best you can from time to time to get a sight or to get sight of the kind of landing area, and you notice atop uh, one of the mountains that uh, to the southeast, uh, you do notice that there is in fact an additional fairly large uh, uh, like radio tower that has been built atop. Uh, atop the mountain itself that wasn't on the specs that you have for the map that you guys are are working off of. Uh, let me go ahead and put that on here for you. All right. So two successes. I didn't think you'd get two successes, but you did it. So. I didn't think I would get two successes. <laughs> I didn't think you'd get one. <laughs> Maximum of it. Two and right. got two. So it looks like maybe the compound has power. Maybe the refinery too. There's There's some sort of tower here. To the southeast. It wasn't on the map, though. That means there's some dirty liars down here. They're building things that they're not reporting. If there's something I hated, I hate liars. So let's go destroy the tower. I think we were potentially being scanned earlier, so we definitely want to keep an eye on that tower. Okay. So where do you want to land? You would know with the size of your ship that you basically need to land somewhere in the valley. Like you couldn't land on top of the mountain. Like your 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 ship is about forty five meters in length, so you're looking at roughly one hundred and fifty feet. Le- you know, trying to find a space to put down on the mountainside is probably not going to cut it. It's just a question of where do you want to put down. So did I hear correctly? The refinery doesn't have power. It doesn't seem to be under power. No. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of like really kind of heavy wind and chop that's causing. Uh, causing visibility to be a little less, but um, but from what you can tell, like it looks like it suffered some damage. <laughs> I like it, Chuck. Hang glide yeah. in the tower. Always Hang works. Glides. Always Maximum works. Maximum cool. <laughs> uh, I think if we want to keep ourselves um, in oxygen, I th- my plan, I, if it's big enough, is to land over by sea because then we'll be able to use the tunnels to get everywhere okay. that we want to go. Okay. So you guys also have uh, you have vehicles. So you instruct Forrester to land, and as he's kind of pulling in, he points to some damage on the landing pad. But your ship is size enough that you can kind of kind of get down as well. But you, you can definitely see as you're you're bringing it down that the area here has seemed to have suffered some kind of damage. The explosive explosive debris. It looks like there's some vehicles that have been destroyed. It looks like there's been some kind of firefight down here of some kind. Uh, but you land, and uh, at this point, we'll say Abbott is done with his surgery on Koenig. Um, you have two vehicles at your disposal. One is an ATV that fits like four to five people, and one is a, a small two-person, uh, two-person gyro car. So for the sake of things, we'll say... Matt's character and Ripper go off. Maybe they're like doing a scouting pass or something in the gyro car since it's two people. Just And then the four of you can kind of stick together if that makes – that's cool. Yeah. That okay. works. There we are. We're all finished up. That treatment should be good enough for a king, Koenig. Uh, uh, you're talking my language. I'll take it. Okay. So after a little bit of time, you guys go ahead and suit up. You're still not feeling great, Koenig, but you're not going to – you're not gonna quit, and you, uh, you guys, do you guys take the ATV or do you just go out on foot right now? Take the ATV. Take the ATV. Okay. Agreed. 
Nice. Ice. Give ourselves the maximum mobility. Right. Yeah, get... walking's for nerds anyway. And don't forget that this does, because of some successful roles by I think it was Claymore and Abbott. Mm-hmm. Strangely enough, uh, the two, the two, two of them, they uh, helped helped our roughneck adhere a Gatling gun to this. So you do actually have a gun attached to it. Um, okay, so you get out uh, the uh, kind of cargo cargo bay flops down drive the atv out you see kind of ripper and another marine uh go off uh in the gyro car start scouting a different site uh whichever one you guys don't go to and uh yeah when you look around you can see there's been some severe damage to pad c uh you can see that there looks as though there's actually been some kind of collapse uh, of par- partially of the pad itself into the tunnel um, you can tell that there's still some exhaust hatches and stuff here and there that could potentially lead down. Uh, you don't think that you could get down there with the ATV, but you could, like, we're talking about literal ladders you can climb down into. Uh, uh, but looking around, uh, it definitely seems that there's a significant amount of damage took place here. What do you guys want to do? Well, if we got a route we can take in the ATV to the compound, then. Okay. Can we fit the ATV in the tunnel areas? Not here. On Pad C, it looks like the uh, like Pad C has suffered some damage, and like the tunnel looks to be collapsed, uh, like the entrance. So the only the only way of getting down appears to be like an auxiliary hatch, which is just like a personal ladder. But like to get a vehicle down, looks like that's been kind of imploded. You're not gonna be able to like halo this up. We'll check out pads A and B, make sure they are okay. empty. Yeah, so you head over, so you drive over. Uh, who's driving, by the way? Claymore. As you wish. <laughs> <laughs> if Mama Bear says do it, I do it. Please drive. Okay. All right. So 10 and 2. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had no training in this either. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but I Just, follow orders very well. It's such a good salt. A good burrito. Excuse me. I almost did it, Aaron. Look at that. I almost did it. Uh, okay. Hey, here we go. Just uh, right one goes, left one slows, <laughs> 10 and 2, and. <laughs> okay. So you start driving over toward. Now, the terrain is mostly rough around here, uh, but you get over to uh, one of the other pads. Uh, first one you could probably get to is B and you can tell this one's more intact, uh, looks as though there. So just to describe, there's like a kind of a circular landing pad, which is roughly 200 feet in diameter. And then you've got this kind of one, one side, uh, which is the, in this case, the Northern side, there's like a descendable, like you can descend down a ramp through what looked like blast doors of some kind, which were destroyed over by pad C. So as you pull the ATV up. Uh, who's got the best observation here? So I know for the for future, for no reason whatsoever. I think, uh, I don't know. I've got, I'll roll five dice with observation. Six for observation. Okay. Okay. Um, so, Barrett, go ahead and roll observation. <laughs> so good. All right, roll your stress. I'm all right. Okay. Keeping it together. All right. Yeah. You, uh, it doesn't take more, more, more than a couple minutes, uh, probably about, you know, maybe about five to 10 minutes to drive the ATV off road a bit, uh, and get over to, to, to pad B. Uh, don't see anybody around. Doesn't look like any activity. You do again, see some debris here, but it's not as extensive as it was by C. Uh, you guys want to, and there's that, there's that descent. And then there's that, those large kind of blast doors that you would assume, go into that tunnel. This place chance appears to be abandoned. So far, but uh, I don't know. Any chance we can get these blast doors open and drive this thing into that tunnel? I'm willing to give it a try. Moving heavy things is something I'm actually very good at. Give it a Permission shot. to move the heavy stuff, please. Permission granted. So when Barrett's like, no, 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 no. I need you to 
check check Koenig's bandages. Abbott, I want you to go. <laughs> Would you like some assistance in opening the door? Fine. Okay. Did you pop out of the ATV, got your suit on, Claymore, Abbott, you're fine. Wind kind of whipping around, dirt, dust, debris, all kind of flopping against you. Um, it's not the easiest sight. Uh, it's kind of dark out still. If you remember what it was like when the Clone Marines arrived back on uh, at the very beginning of Aliens, it's kind of that kind of feel going on right now, mm. very dark. Um, but you get down, you can see there's these double blast doors. Um, you think that it's, but you know, if if Ripper were here, maybe like you might be able to like hack into the uh, uh, into, into the actual control panel to the to the right of the doors and maybe try to open them up that way. Uh, but you might be able to force them open as well. We're gonna do this brute force. All right. Okay. I am the brute squad. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll heavy machinery. Awesome. Is Abbott helping? Abbott, yeah, you can take an assist from Abbott. Plus okay. one mod. Heavy machinery. I think I right click to modify that, right? Or do it off to the side? Uh, you can just temporarily put... I don't think there's a pop-up, so just put it temporarily in. Uh, oh, gotcha. Okay. Lords and ladies of fate, thank you for the raid. Uh, we are playing Alien tonight. They're about to... Uh, they're down a couple. Uh, but uh, they're about to enter into a site that supposedly has crazy renegade synthetics. So we'll see how this goes. Three successes. So I know how to I know how to do heavy stuff. Okay. Uh, yes, so you you're you're very good at it. Shut up. Okay. And so, thank you. So, as Abbott and Claymore are there, Barrett and Koenig, what are you two doing? Watching. Okay. Watching very closely. Yes. Yeah. In the ATV. Yeah. Or you're outside. Posted up. Okay. Uh, I'll be posted up, standing in the back of the ATV with rifle ready, just in case shit hits the fan. Okay. So as they, you watch as uh, as Claymore, as you're pulling this apart, you suddenly hear a click, and you realize, like just a little too late, that this. This 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 door this this blaster is actually booby trapped in some way, and erupting outward from right above you, like right like nested into like the door the door frame above. You see this claymore mine, strangely enough, just explode <laughs> outward. Uh, as I, yeah, go I would ahead. like to I would like to take advantage of my bodyguard trait to try and make a mobility test to push him out of the way and jump in in its way. Okay, let me let me actually roll the attack first to see, see. if it would even. <laughs> I see. Yeah, but yeah, absolutely, you totally. I'm can imagining, do that. you know, Claymore mine probably get him, but yeah, you're right. It yeah. Could not. Oops, sorry, I should have. <laughs> oh. Sound effects. Yeah, I got a sound effects now. That's uh, three successes. Sorry, I didn't mean to put it on private. I'll re I'll reroll that. <laughs> I'll reroll that in the open. All right, one success this time. Uh, so what do you want? So you want to try to do your bodyguard trait? Go ahead. Yes. Go right ahead. <laughs> Yay. I did it. Yay. Do you claim where you should really be nicer to have it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, so as you push Claymore out of the way, this mine explodes and you take the damage. Do you know how much damage a Claymore mine is? Uh, it says nine. It says nine. Oh, <laughs> oh no! So I, I am wearing armor. I'm a good yeah, go ahead and roll your armor. Roll yeah. your armor. Absolutely. <laughs> good little synth. Oh. Uh, I mean, artificial oh. person. Yeah. Oh my god. No, oh, that's no. not gonna help. <laughs> go ahead oh, and roll no. your critical injury then. Oh yeah. no. Um, oh my. How do I roll coming. that for? Uh, there's a. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Oh no. Oh I no. I love it. Oh no. It's the best. <laughs> Why? <laughs> uh, so thank you for I would throwing your worthless this body. Is the most cursed adventure ever. Uh, Android is torn to shreds or crushed. Core systems are really damaged, and a Comtech role is required to communicate with the Android as this thing explodes. So, uh, Koenig and Barrett, as you're watching, oh. you see as the door opens, but right as it does, this little 
Something just drops down from right above the door and explodes. Abbott manages to push Clamor out of the way, who goes falling off to the side. But Abbott is ripped. You see just that that white blood just fly all over the place. Clamor, when you look back down, you can see that Abbott just sort of sitting, is laying on the ground, twitching that white blood you everywhere. have my sympathies. Abbott, what did you do? You, you have my sympathies. Well. Pull him back, pull him back. Right. I'll get as many pieces as I can carry. See if we got a shovel back here. Like, maybe I'll get a piece of torso that's still loosely connected and sling it over my shoulder. Just, like, I've got a combat knife on my hip. Maybe I'll just kind of shove his head down on that and just carry as much of him as I can. Uh, Oh, my gosh. This is going great. Uh, So we'll... I feel too bad to make fun of Abbott anymore. (laughs) (laughs) I want to be cold, but I just can't. I succeeded at Comtex so that I can communicate. With no, he's there. Him. Yeah, his oh. course is just really nice, so you can communicate with him. Uh, wow. Okay, <laughs> but he can't necessarily move too much at the moment. Oh my gosh. Mm. Well, oh, Master this, Barrett. this is an interesting field trip. Mm-hmm. Um, it's Chuck quit. He's like, I'm out. <laughs> you gotta check out. Too much. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> gotta go. <laughs> okay. Dear God. You look um, like you. You look like something's wrong. He, you've been. You've been injured. You've been severely well, I've injured. I've been more than injured. Well, at least you grasp the scope of the situation. Uh, you, you, you've never looked better. Thank you for the compliment. Oh, you're looking sweet. very well yourself. I'm glad to see that you've sustained no damage. Uh, I have it. You're a good Marine. That was very brave, Abbott. That, you, you're a very good Marine. Everything all of you are saying pleases me. I... Uh, you know, Sergeant, hate you, but you're a good marine. Uh, Sergeant, what the fuck? This is looking Ooh. like Fubar right here. Mm. Um, let's get him back to the ship and get him some attention and revisit this entry. Okay. Uh, I'll say I'll give you two options here. Like you can either. <laughs> You can either carry him around like on your back <laughs> and he could do like observation, basically non-physical roles, any non-physical mm-hmm. role he can do. Uh, but because he's literally torn to shreds and crushed, uh, I'll say like his, his, his systems are still functioning to, so you can communicate with him. But um, or uh, if you want, Adam, you can play one of the uh, support staff. We have other people. So we have uh, Biggie's uh, Biggie's sister. Uh, we've got the pilot. If you want to pull one of them up, I could uh, play Biggie's sister. Yeah, sure. I already have her. I have her sheet and everything ready. I give it to you. You want to do that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> then we'll go. Then we'll definitely bring him back to the ship. Okay. And... All right. There you go. You should have a. Uh, you should have that ready to go. You should be able to see it now in the player sh- in the player folder. Mm-hmm. Let me give you a. Oh the, my! The dice do what the dice do. This is this has been a rough one. The dice do screw us. <laughs> I, really, I just wanted to do one thing that I was good at. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all I wanted to do. I wanted to do something good. And it's so good the door exploded. Right? Oh, the hell out of that door. Yeah, blew the door up. <laughs> I think basically what we learned is like don't jump in front of anybody ever. Mm. it's the oh classic did you, did you check the door for traps it's the classic yeah. Dungeons and Dragons check the door for traps please. okay uh, so we did not we did I'm just not. setting I'm just continuing to set up I'm, his I'm not an shoot. observer I'm a breacher okay 
so I think that, yeah. So some time passes. This, this door has been not just breached, but exploded, suffered some damage. Abbott's back on the ship. Um, because of the issues that you all have with this thing exploding, we'll say you bring along your engineer. There's going to be more of these these mines and stuff. Who better to disarm him or you know take care of it than somebody who actually has uh, skills and heavy machinery? Uh, but at the same time, remember she's not you know she's uh, she's more of a support you know she's like she's a, a rough neck more of a rough neck than she is anything else i think uh you can go ahead and load up uh abbott with uh, some or you can uh, adam you can load her up with some weapons if you want it's fine okay so okay so you so some time has passed and you come back are you going back to the exact same door at b or are you going somewhere else try do you want to try a <laughs> B is already disarmed. B yeah. is already disarmed. I think we'll just want to make sure that there isn't any activity. Okay. That setting off that uh, didn't alert a welcoming committee. Okay. Raw observation. <laughs> yeah. I think all of you probably should have taken a point of stress, too, from seeing Abbott yeah. explode. So. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's fair. Uh, go ahead and roll your shit. You're keeping it together, but this is not going well. Uh, you don't see any immediate signs anywhere here of a welcome party now. And well. what is the, is this Eurydice? Am I saying that right? The name of the roughneck? Oh, well, that's how they say it in the books, but my mom always called me Eurydice. Eurydice, okay. Yep. That's right. But, I, you know, Eurydice, you know? Eurydice, okay. We're going to really say sorry. that I nicknamed you Yuri. Well, I'm not Yuri. I'm Eurydice. It's Eurydice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Mama Bear says your nickname is Yuri. So, all right, well, just don't call me late. You're like, why would they do right. that? She said your name is Yori. <laughs> your responsibility <laughs> is to look out for traps, looking out for traps, bombs. Oh, yeah, right. well, I mean. If it's got a bolt, I can turn it. If it's got a wire, I can cut it. I can, I can do that. Perfect. It's all you need. <laughs> all right. Well, let me get some of my stuff, and I'll get around on out. All right. So I'm just, you know, still getting getting some stuff on the character sheet. But yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Ooh, we're getting all fancy. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so you go into the tunnel are you going are you entering the tunnel at this point yeah okay the tunnel's incredibly dark no the all like you can see the what looks to have been old running lights in here that have that are not under power anymore you're not sure whether or not whatever kind of generator connection has been severed or whether or not there's been damage or they've been turned off intentionally hard to say uh but uh but yeah you um it's very dark i imagine some of you have Bring up lights at this point mm -hmm. uh, as you're moving by. Uh, what's the marching order, would you say, as you guys are moving through this tunnel? Is it big enough for the ATV to move through? Uh, yeah, I would say because of the explosion. Yeah, you can do that. You can bring the ATV in. <laughs> I like that idea. Okay. There's some good and some bad. It's big enough for the ATV. Okay. Though. So you guys drive the ATV in. You hear a little crunch as you think you take out. You think you run over maybe a piece of Abbott on your way through. <laughs> and then <laughs> and inwards you go get the lights on for the ATV itself and yeah you travel for it but you see a couple turnoffs here and there you see one turnoff that seems to go off towards pad A uh, along the way you see what looks like a disabled uh, like two man or four, four person seater I should say uh, two in the front and like two kind of looking back almost like a golf cart uh, that's been uh, crashed against one of the walls and you can see there's some cracks 
in the in the sediment of the wall. Uh, and eventually, after probably about ten minutes of travel, uh, fifteen minutes of travel around there, you uh, you arrive at what looks like a cave in. Uh, and you would you would probably guess by the amount of time that you've traveled, that you're pretty close to the combat at this point. Uh, but it looks to have caved in, as if the the way forward is blocked. Now, every so often, every about two hundred or every about two hundred meters, you can see that there's like an there's like an exhaust ladder uh, or an escape escape ladder that goes up to the surface. Um, and so there's some of those if you were to double back. Uh, but look, there's just a whole mess load of rubble, a mixture of of the construction of the tunnel, but also like rock and sediment from above, as if somebody set a charge off here or did some sort of explosion. I wonder who, who would have done that. Who would have done that type of thing? Um, is there any gaps in the rubble large enough for us to move through? Or is it completely closed off? Uh, yeah, I think you could probably squeeze through there. Sure, like you all could. I don't know if the ATV could get through there. Right. Which, I right, mean, I know right. the ATV can't get through there. Uh, but the four of you could, yeah. Listen, I've already had enough of my innards squeezed out. Right now, I feel like a full tube of toothpaste ready to be uh, gripped. Why don't we take one of them ladders and trek it on the uh, surface? What do you think, Sergeant? Sounds good. <laughs> okay. So you guys back out of the ATV. Climb up the ladder, nearest yeah. one pop out you immediately see that the compound is i don't know maybe a, a thousand feet away you can see that it's multi-level uh you can see that there are a variety of like incomplete structures around it you can see what looks like foundations have been laid for other buildings and such here and there that hasn't yet been completed uh you can see that there's debris in some of those places what well, looks like it's almost looks like a firefight you can see bullet holes explosive you know kind of explosive residue um, between you and where you're going uh so who go ahead and roll observation anybody who wants to yeah i'll use the scope on my rifle are there windows that we can see in this compound you do in fact see that there is a there is a lookout level there's a roof lookout level and looks like there's at least two uh two other above ground um okay. above ground levels uh i'll be using the scope on my rifle kind of scanning so i, I kind of want to see if there's any signs of movement inside the compound from Okay. our current vantage point but i uh you want to push that yeah okay there we go you uh you do in fact you see movements oh gosh <laughs> it's just not been good you oh. see, as you start to tremble because you see the reason you start to tremble is that you as you're staring down your scope kind of moving 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 you look at the windows and then you kind of keep going up, keep going up, and then finally you look up towards the uh, the roof, and you catch off of like what looks like an emergency light that just so happens to shine just a little bit of like this red light onto what might be a kind of an exhaust duct on the roof, and you see a sniper scope staring right back at you. Um, and you're not sure if they see you, but it's there's somebody on the roof, and they are kind of about what, what looks like decent decent hardware uh i'll uh i'll quietly get everyone's attention and do the you know hand signals that there's enemy spotted roof up there take cover then i'll hey, find somewhere to hide hey what are you saying uh Someone's up top with a gun looking for us. Oh, shit. Quick, get over here. Let's hide behind this rubble. Like, is it possible that it's one of the Marines that was here before us? I'm not sure. They got good hardware. They're moving, so whatever it is is live. Uh, why don't we get back, uh, get into better position, and we can see if we can take a look, see if we can identify anything on it. I'm not right. doing anything, by the way, because I... Uh... I also had to roll stress, and I dropped an item, so I'm distracted at the moment. Okay. Oh, no. You dropped an item. I'm going to say you dropped it in the tunnel. 
and then so it's down by the ATV. Mm. Uh, what would be? Let's see Great. what what do you have on you that's moderately Can I useful? Drop the shoulder lamp, Captain. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, oh boy. Uh, Karine, is that uh, is that for a complication, or are you trying to help them heal stress? <laughs> I mean, complications. We could always use more complications. <laughs> oh, God. This like, has just been so rough. It's just one foot after the I mean, other. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Um, we did say TPKs are all the rage. They are they all are, the rage. They are. They are. Yeah. Matt and Jen already. were the smart ones tonight. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. um, who wants to roll mobility for the group to kind of try to take a stealthy approach? Um, this is actually what uh, Matt would be good at, I think. It's four yeah. Yeah. I've got a whopping five. Better than me. Better than me. Uh, I got a negative two on agility <laughs> right now, uh, which would put me at a, even with the negative five, that would put me at six. There you go. Well, all right then. Okay. You're the agile one. Koenig, you, you take the lead. Man, what a boss Koenig is right now. He's literally dying. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, I got it. This whole I got a success. Makes me easier to move. Uh, okay. I just can't, can't go too fast. I have to walk straight into the wind or I whistle like a beer bottle. <laughs> you want to push that? Well, if you ask it like that, yes. I just, it's innocent. It's an innocent question. Uh, oh, no. no. Just the one success. Okay. Okay. So mm -hmm. you you try you try to get as as close as you're trying to like do as best you can to move from section to section using some of the some of the walls of like the in progress construction to like you know hide you from from approach stuff like that. Uh, let me just uh, hit this button really quick. Hey, buddy. Do you need one? You need one of what? Are you sitting there talking like beer bottles? I could get you one here. You got one? What do you think I got one? Of course I got more than one. Well, that's fantastic. I'm sure missing half my guts. That shit's going to hit me real good. <laughs> Perhaps Come we on. might want to succeed at something first before we have a celebratory drink. <laughs> succeed cool. at disaffecting my insides. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Loosen up a bit, you know. All right. Listen, if there was one thing that my ex-wife was good at, it was driving me to drink. So let's not fuck that up today. God, I hope Koenig doesn't die. Oh no, you shouldn't <laughs> drink really and drive. Don't. I mean, there's many things I would do while drinking, but driving's not one. Well, it's, Claymore uh, is yeah. driving, so we're okay there. Yeah, he's my DD today. Yeah. He's besides, he's not old enough to drink. What are you, boy? Like three? I'm. I'm a grown up. I just I don't I don't like to drink because sometimes I don't behave well when I drink and I cause oh, problems. You shouldn't have told me that. I got a goal now. Sometimes <laughs> I don't behave well when I don't drink. Sometimes I don't behave well. All right, fair enough. Let's move forward, everyone. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So as you guys are, Good are call, Sergeant. Moving underneath what looks like this the sort of skeletal structure of some kind of building uh, you uh, you notice there are two bodies that appear to be kind of partially obscured and hidden uh, in what looks like a, an alcove inside the roof hasn't been fully laid on you can see that a few pieces of the pieces of like the kind of the sheet metal has been laid out but there's still some kind of open view of the sky above but this is giving you at least a little bit like you're you're obscured from the tower currently, so whoever's sniping up on top of the tower can't see you here. But you do in fact see two bodies on the ground here, hidden in an alcove. We see any identifying marks on them. So yeah, when you walk, if you if you walk up and you take a look, um, they are dressed in the same gear as you. They are in fact Colonial Marines. Uh, it does like just kind of they they have Enviro suits on and everything. Um, you do see that they have certain kind of patches and such. Roll, command, or observation. Either one of those. All of you can do this. 
Yeah, I th- I I thought this was gonna be a, a cakewalk. <laughs> this is not a cakewalk. Oh, I gotta roll stress. <laughs> no. Yeah, this is how you, this is how they get you. Oh, I drop an item. Okay, pick one that pick an item, drop it. It's fine. Uh, I have to roll stress again too, but I got three successes. Okay, so you notice a few things. <laughs> Oh. Drop another item. Just keep dropping oh, stuff. No. <laughs> Remember when I said you guys were special forces? <laughs> Good. <laughs> uh, you uh, you notice that there's a patch uh, on uh, on their suits. <laughs> I lose my sidearm. <laughs> You're dropping your sidearm. I like it. I, like, I appreciate the randomness. Uh, that basically looks uh, like a, a little devil riding on top of some kind of hellhound. And uh, you would recognize these, Barrett, as a unit called the Hell Riders, which are, as far as you're aware, according to the briefing materials you were given from uh, from from Reddick, um, this is a unit assigned to the Anchor Point Garrison, and presumably were on board the USS Asteria when they came to uh, originally, like the the first ship sent here to deal with this issue. We're getting closer. And Barrett's going to keep a running tally because there were supposed to be 40 Marines on the Asteria. We've got three accounted for. I'll pull their dog tags. Mm. Okay. I'll hand them to you, Barrett. Uh, I'll get those. And I would say you, you'd you also note that they don't seem to have any, like, sort of bullet runes or anything like that. It looks like this is more of probably exposure that they probably mm. suffered from. Uh, that Can we check the air supply on their suits yeah when you do that it's 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 uh it's been depleted um, oh, that's a bad way to go i know it's cold but we should probably search them for ordinance we're probably in for a bad time here you're right oh great all right uh if you start searching through you notice oh wow that's a good roll uh there's two uh two m40 hedp grenades you can go ahead and take those if you want uh and both of them have uh second where is it uh both of them have arma m41a pulse rifles uh definitely give one to oh my gosh i forgot your name yuri yuri d Yuri B. It's Yuri Yuri D's. Yuri D's. That's it. Yuri D's. Yep. Going to Yuri D's. You know how to use one of these? Well, kind of, but I prefer this as I like pump the uh, pump of a shotgun. Uh, That's badass right there. All right. This is my weapon, so I will reload on ammo. Okay. Do you need them? I just realized I actually don't have a pistol. Do any of them have a pistol? You know what? It's been going so bad for you guys. Yes, they have a pistol. Uh, you can take a pistol, sure. Okay. Um, M, uh, M4A3 service pistol. Standard. Okay, excellent. My god. I can't believe I have 28 kilograms of carrying capacity. <laughs> <laughs> like an ox. Wow. wow. He's just like a walking SWAT team, basically. You um, are the ATV. Yeah. Okay. Well, once we kind of sort this, can I see if I can kind of move around this building to try and get a sight on that sniper position? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay. Are you looking to see... So you're trying to climb up to the to the roof or trying to a second level? Is that what you're looking, looking for? Yeah, whatever. Move up and ground while still trying to maintain some form of cover. I'll go ahead and bust my ghillie suit out and put that over my Enviro suit the best I can because I'm sure this barren rockland has lots of weeds that I can hide myself in. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Go ahead and roll mobility if you're trying to find a spot. Negative two for stress. This is fantastic. Two that's, successes. That's a great Yay. roll. Yeah, you're able to get to sort of the second level, not all the way up to the 
to the rooftop of this uh, of this building. Um, it looks like more like a like a, like you're not even sure exactly what this might be. There's it's that's it's it's barely built, uh, but you know where to look, uh, and you can see that there is in fact uh, somebody who is actively looking, and you can see that they're they're focused in the direction of landing pad B. So the direction you're coming from, which is off to the west. And so they seem to be really scouring uh, as if perhaps they were, in fact, <laughs> aware of the Claymore explosion uh, down there. But they do not seem to notice you. Thank you. See any details on them? Uh, roll observation. All right. Okay. Oh, stress Ooh. die. Save the day. <laughs> Looks almost identical to one of the synthetics, the male synthetic uh, that you saw when you were on the orbital lifter. No suits okay. whatsoever. They do have what looks like some kind of jacket uh, on uh, that's a little bit different, but otherwise it's almost identical. Okay, I'll relay, relay that back to Barrett. Like, uh, Sergeant, they're up there, sniper rifle looking back to B where we came from. So I think our... They at least have some idea someone's here. And it is unfortunately not one of the Marines. Which it is. I, I was hoping. Hope. Yeah. I could try and take the shot, but I got to tell you, putting a synth down like this is, uh, it's, it's not a difficult uh, task. Yeah. To all gather I'm, Claymore and Eurydice um, and say, we must move quietly. We have some cover right now. They don't know our location. We need to be careful moving forward. Uh, while you all move forward, I'll stay where I am so I can kind of watch that and kind of help signal you all okay. when it's safe to move. And you still have comms. Don't forget, you guys have suits on, you have comms, etc. Yeah. Uh, you would also be able to tell uh, Koenig there's probably a couple different ways in. You can see where the cave in was from your position. And you can see that it, it, it's only temporary, and you, you, you think you see another exhaust hatch going down on the opposite side, so you can probably get down back into the tunnel. Uh, you do see various ladders that climb up the exterior of the building all the way up to the rooftop as well. So there's ways up to the rooftop where this, this sniper is, uh, and there's plenty of, ver of like exhaust hatches and other things like that um, that, you can, that are visible. So there's multiple points of ingress that you could potentially get inside. Okay, I'll relay that all to Barrett. What I see, what's the uh, what's the plan? So we're gonna need to leave the ATV here then. Oh yeah, taking that above surface to get us here is gonna put us right in line of fire. Maybe we can take out um, take something out of the vehicle to make sure it can't be stolen while we're gone. Well, you apparently can carry just about everything so uh, normally that'd be the case put a club up I... <laughs> <laughs> got a space club or just I'm like sure take there's... the battery out or something yeah, i'm sure there's a, a, a crucial wire or something <laughs> well, that'll that work <laughs> that you kind of need it to reconnect that well, if one of you <laughs> wants to make the go back towards the uh, ladder going down i'll keep an eye here you Don't want know that, that battery out? I'll take the battery out. That that'll that'll do it. Yeah, but then again, that does mean having to cross the field of fire again. Don't really feel like being shot. But actually, I'm sorry. Would you like for me to do it, ma'am? So, is there a way that we can move forward that's not going to bring us back into line of vision? Yeah, I mean, it's just mobility test moving forward. Just being stealthy versus its observation. I already rolled its observation, so it's just a question of whether okay. or not you beat it. Uh, but yeah, if somebody were to go back, they would be backtracking. Mm. So. Okay. so then we'll just move forward. Okay. okay. I would like to put out the suggestion that we move over to the side of the compound here, shimmy up the ladder to the top, and uh, take this one out, hopefully throw it off the side and then uh, catch them unaware by hitting the rear flank while they're expecting us to walk through the front door. That sounds just like something you would do. Take them from the rear. 
Sounds like a good tactical choice. Whatever y'all say, I'll just do it. So let's proceed quietly. Okay. Uh, That's kind of hard to do. Claymore, roll a stealth for your the approach group to see if you can get. Because I think you had the second highest. So yeah, I'm gonna give okay. it to you. I think it's supposed to be the other way around, but mercy. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's give it a go. And don't suck. Okay. Let me do my. Woo. Uh, Koenig, as you're watching through the scope and you're like, you're looking at the, the other shooter on the roof, you look down your crew until you can kind of no longer see them at a certain point. Uh, once or twice you can see that the rifle, the, the, the rifle kind of the, the barrel of the rifle kind of moves down towards where they were, but doesn't quite seem to, uh, to get to them. Let me, uh, let me ban some people for, uh, wanting us to be famous. One sec. Oh, I want to be famous. Like I want to be famous. You guys are yeah. Famous. Oh. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of them. <laughs> All at once. Okay. But they do not seem to take the shot. Whether it means they have they didn't see or they didn't have a shot, you're not sure, but they ne- but they never fire. Uh, Barrett Abbott, Claymore, you, you, you scale the side of the building, the ladder. Uh, I'm assuming Claymore is going first. Am I wrong in that? Yeah. Okay. Get up to the rooftop. And the rooftop, so it's like a three-story climb. You pass by what looks like a lookout room, and you can see as you're getting up towards it that it's just like glass paneling all the way around, like this wraparound glass panel all along the sides. Uh, But as you peek inside, Claimer, you don't see anybody in there. You just peek in. And like there's like red emergency lights that are illuminating the, the the area, but otherwise you don't see any like bright lights on. You don't see any movement. You don't see anyone inside. But it looks like it's some kind of control room. I'm not smart enough to know what's going on in there, but I don't see anything. Should we look for traps or just keep going? Uh, that's what Yuri's doing, looking for traps as we go. You guys are oh, on a yeah. ladder. Yeah, I am. That's that's right. None yet. <laughs> <laughs> I've told you if there was one, yeah. But you know. I love her so much. I hope she doesn't die either. All right. Are you yeah. bypassing this and going right up to the roof, Claymore? I assume so. I'll just like look back and if that seems to be all right. I get the nod, the I keep nod going. Okay. So it's- you guys are on the roof now. Here's the here's the situation. There's a series of like exhaust va- you know exhaust pipes, and mm-hmm. you can see that there's different vents and stuff kicking up. So there's a lot of different different things sticking up out of the rooftop. A couple look like solar panels of some kind. Not that they're doing any good uh, currently in the weather, but uh, if you want to get any closer at this point, you 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 have a partial view right now. You can actually see they're somewhat obscured. But you can see the the figure that Koenig's been pointed out. But if you want to get any closer than you are right now, you're going to roll another mobility, or you can just go ahead and take shots now. I'm willing to try and move forward. If anything, I'll get my shield out. I'll be ready. I'll try and go out with the stun baton. And if it turns to fire at me, then that means you've got a clear shot. Yeah. If that suits you. Koenig, are you prepared with your... I'm ready. I got beat on it. As soon as I see movement going on, I can take a shot. All right. Then I'll kind of motion Claymore forward. I promise I'll try very hard not to get myself killed. All right. Roll that mobility test, Claymore, since you're moving up. Anybody else who's moving up from here and trying to get close has to roll a mobility test. If you just want to stay here, which is which is basically on the opposite side of the roof, which is long, you know, essentially long range, you can do so now. Uh, Airy Diesel, try and move up. Okay, go ahead and roll mobility. Do you want to push there, Claymore? I do. Yeah, go for it. <gasps> okay. Do you want to push Eurydice? Mm-hmm. Okay. You can call her Eurydice, Eurydice if you want. That's fine. <laughs> this is how she pronounces it. Okay. So, Koenig, you're you're ready. 
Barrett, you're hanging back, guns ready. Both Claymore and Abbott are, are, are approaching. Claymore, you've managed to sneak up behind. You're almost up to short range when you hear a clank and you look behind you as Eurydice has the butt of her of her shotgun as she's turning around a corner smashes against this metal vent and the barrel of the gun quickly whips around in the direction uh, and so initiative is going to begin <laughs> i finally rolled well observation i was rolling zero or one for the longest time and i finally got a good roll <sighs> All right. Oh boy. So let's just go ahead and put that in there. This should work pretty easy. Well, it also didn't help that she probably cursed like something when she did it. Just... <laughs> right. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> All right. Uh Koenig, it makes perfect sense that you would be first. You're as as ready as nice. anybody. So you are up, sir. All right. Uh and ranged combat still agility, so that's still a minus two. Okay, two success, roll some stress. Oh, no. Oh, no. I freeze. Okay. Oh, no. All right, rolled armor. Didn't get anything. Oh, God, sorry, I'm private again. Uh, okay. Oh, I did forget that that was armor piercing, so. Oh, that wouldn't even matter then. What's the total damage? Oh, nice. Uh, base damage is... Oh, I should have rolled that off the rifle itself. Oh, uh, uh, base damage is two. Plus armor pier two more successes? Yeah, uh, plus one more success. So three damage altogether. Uh, armor piercing is half. Armor, Just half, so it, yeah. It... I, got, I got zero okay. anyway, so it wouldn't oh, matter. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so all that goes through as... You hear, like, this loud, like, which was an eerily quiet moment. It's just, like, wind. And all of a sudden, there's this high-caliber rifle shot comes out. Uh, and you can see Claymore as you are the closest. You're not even sure, by the way, if, if they've even seen you as they seem to be focused on Eurydice. And, mm -hmm. uh, like, their shoulder just flies backwards as an eruption of, like, white goo. Uh, just paints the wall behind them, but they still seem to be functional. Uh, next up, it is their turn. Um, and because they see Eurydice, that's who they're going to fire at. Uh, no. I, I hate to say. Um, or Ellsworth. They just can't take a, can't get a break. Oh, man. Uh, one success. Uh, do you have, did you, did you give yourself armor, I'm assuming? Yeah, I didn't give her the marine armor. I gave her like a riot vest or something like that. Okay, that's fine. You could have taken the marine armor too. She technically yeah. is a marine. She's just a different kind. Take all the armor you can get. Yeah. yeah. It's, it, go ahead and uh, roll your armor. Okay. Nope. That's all right. Cool. So go ahead and you take three points of damage. I'm sorry, two points of damage. My bad. Two points oh, okay. of damage. Two points of damage. Ah, oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> and then next up. Let's see that was that claymore it's your turn right well i've got the riot shield in front of me i've got the stun baton in my hand i'm gonna go crack its skull okay uh take a plus two they still don't know you're there as you kind of come from around and you charge in doosh, 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 doosh. oh man awesome take a plus two to your so head. many times yeah oh no <laughs> one all those <laughs> dice for one, I'm pushing that. <laughs> no way am I rolling that many dice and accepting one. <laughs> oh no. So two total? Yeah. Okay. And so oh, actually I want to see if there's stuff you can do with extra successes on close combat. There I'm are, pushing. I think. Uh you got you have one extra success. Yeah, there's the stunt. If you look at your character sheet, you can yeah. actually read the stunts uh under under skills. If you look to the right of where your numbers are on the skills tab, there's a little like uh, a button that says stunts. Click on that; it'll tell you what stunts oh, you yeah. can do. Yeah, oh, I don't think pull it... a weapon from their opponent. Yeah, ooh, that's what I want to do. Okay, so I'll, I'll take the one success. The stun baton doesn't do a ton of damage. Let me. Oh, I did. I should have rolled that off the actual baton. I would have had even more dice. And you would have sounds too. 
Oh. All right, that's my bad. It's okay. No, it's fine. It's just all that work I put in. That, you know, <laughs> I know, I know. So it's only one damage, but it does need to make a check. Or actually, I don't know if since need to roll a check against being stunned. So you're doing... Uh, so what are you doing for your stun? So the stun baton... No, you're stunned. Stun like the extra success. Oh, to knock the weapon away. Okay, so yeah, you walk up and maybe with the riot shield, you knock the the weapon loose as it's still recoiling from the shot from Koenig and you manage to catch it while it's off balance. Mm -hmm. And then as in the, in the same kind of motion as the, as the rifle goes flying and, and rattling to the ground elsewhere, you just jam it with the stun baton right in the chest. Uh, okay. So I need to make a what now? I'm not sure how stun checks work. It says stun of, it has comment stun I effect. Just, and I think it's just stamina. Okay. Uh, one. Okay. So, yeah, it takes its damage, but you don't see it otherwise. It's not like suddenly just is not moving elsewhere. But, yeah, you, you can definitely tell that, like, the, the burn effect from the stun baton has, has certainly done some damage to it. I'm just glad it doesn't have a big, nasty gun in its hand. It does not. It does not have a big, nasty gun. It's on the ground to the side. Uh, okay. So, now it's Ripper. Sorry, I didn't mean to put Ripper on here. My bad. Uh... She's not in this combat, so it's uh, Eurydice's turn. I only have Abbott. Okay. My bad. Yeah, that's fine. Um, now, is it just the one? It's just the one that tell? you guys can see, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so she's going to um, move up to it. And was it laying in the prone position, like, to fire? Uh, no, you you saw it was, like, kind of... It, it was sort of in a in a sort of a crouch seating position, or uh, like a, like one knee down, kind of leaned, leaning the, the rifle on top of one of the exhaust vents to steady it. But it, it okay. stood up to turn around and like th towards you uh, as you were mm. coming up close. So it is standing still, but it has no gun anymore. So yeah. All right. So um, uh, Eurydice is going to uh, run up there towards it and uh, kind of do like a, a slide in with her shotgun and point up towards its uh, um, chest nice. and uh, fire. Do so. I do believe the shotgun does have double armor though, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, it absolutely has double armor. Yeah. You want to push? Nah. Okay, one success. <laughs> uh, what's the base damage of that? Three, Three plus one. So I do get to roll my armor because it does have this jacket on. Sure. Let me pull that up really quick. It does have this jacket. And as you're close, you can see that the jacket looks to be some kind of like a, like a flak jacket of some kind. Doesn't look like it's a full on. So I'm just gonna roll it twice. Oops, wrong button. One and two. All right, so I got one on the armor. Okay, so I do two damage. So two total damage. And that is enough as you come up and it's going, I'm gonna have to roll on the critical injury table for it to see what happens as you come up with your, your gun. Describe how it happens. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Nice. As uh, right. system shutdown. All right. So she slides up there and um, she she puts the shotgun towards his chest and um, says, uh, "Hey, man, nice shot. Wasn't enough." And just uh, uh, blows its uh, internal systems out, and then uh, its its uh, head will fall towards the ground as it's. Uh, not able to be supported enough. Mm -hmm. You can see that the your riot shield claymore gets the brunt of the explosion from like the shot. So all that that white sauce is just covering mm -hmm. the front side of your riot shield. Mm -hmm. Alfredo. <laughs> uh, Koenig, through your scope, you can see that they have quite thoroughly taken care of this thing. Nice. Um, I want to give a quick look around, like in the windows of the building, to see if I notice any additional movement. Roll observation. And yeah, then after that, I want to hustle on up to rejoin. Okay. Yeah, uh, I want to do the same thing. That's well, I, I, so awesome, Yuri. I got one. Oh, thanks. You're not so bad yourself. Uh, I was all like, I am, and then you were like, blam. Hey, you want to call that some sort of, you know, that, that way, if we need to do it again, we know what to call it. The blam and okay. slam. Uh, low slam. ball special. 
I kind of like that. That's like shake and bake. Blame and slam. And I help. <laughs> so, Koenig, as you're looking, uh, you do notice movement uh, on the, what looks like the, f- kind of like through one of the first floor exterior windows, you can suddenly, like you see very, almost just so briefly, there's like red lights, there's like ambient hue coming out some of these windows. And for the briefest second, you just see a flicker as if something moved past it, but you couldn't quite get anything more than that. Okay. So yeah, there's I'll something hustle. in there. Okay. I'll hustle over to the ladder. I did see movement inside there, Sergeant. I think uh, they know we're here for sure now. Back down inside. Okay. So you look around and you do find very easily, you find hatches that actually go down into the building. Uh, if you want to check for traps, go ahead and roll observation. Uh, but Claymore, when you're looking at this, it looks like this is the, the entrance that this, this individual use. You can tell like just looking from a distance, uh, doesn't look to be booby trapped or anything like that. It doesn't look to be rigged. It's just easily enough to, to climb down. Um, as you pop down, uh, did you drop? Oh, you freeze. Just Margo? trying to observe, look for traps. Okay. And... All right. You see Claymore. I'm, I'm very carefully looking for traps. This is where I feel like I'm like stopping and looking at every like, mm. little inch. Okay. Uh, uh, everyone I... else, everyone else has to get, have their. As you guys see Barrett kind of slow down a little bit. Take everyone stress? else has to take stress from that. Okay. Okay. Uh, when I get up there, that rifle that that synth had mm-hmm. um, is its ammo container unit thing uh it's either a magazine or a clip and by fucked if i always get it wrong i don't know uh <laughs> you should have just units, picked one i would have believed you mm-hmm. if the the magazine compatible with my rifle there's no magazines up here come on it's space oh thing. my gosh <laughs> uh it's actually what, what rifle do you have uh i've got the m42a scope rifle how strange that's exactly what this rifle is Okay, I'm going to take its extra ammo. That way, when I critically fail or stress fail a, <laughs> a shot, I have a reload. Okay. Okay, no problem. Claymore, you descend, and you hop down in the middle of a, looks like a, like a hallway. That's, mm-hmm. you look around, and you had to go through like a secondary hatch. This is definitely. You can tell as you, you as you hop down. This is probably got got atmosphere in here. It's probably got its own AC system, HVAC system of some kind. You you hop down in the middle of what looks like a, a fairly lengthy hallway that goes kind of east to west. You can see on the north side there are looks like or excuse me on the east side there looks to be uh, uh, elevators and a stairwell that go down. On the north side, you can see that there's a kind of a fancy looking door, and you can see there's a a uh, one of those uh, one of those little name plates on the outside uh, that's been like ripped off, and it's just flopped down onto the ground. And there's like this empty space. It says uh, Alan Sprague on it, mm. and then yeah. on the other side, you see there's an open door that leads into that lookout room that you saw before and and then on the uh the western side there's another door that just says like server room on it so north elevators east allen sprague uh south uh what looks like uh uh what looks like a like the lookout area or excuse me south what looks like the uh the server room and west what looks like the lookout area one of our missions has to do with assessing their secure databases. So if we have any way to access from the server room. That Why aren't we supposed to take that one NPC with us? Theo can work with any information that we bring back to the ship. Yeah, you can pull hard drives and stuff like that and bring it back. Okay. Let's get that knocked out then. Okay. So Claymore, go up to the server room. Mm-hmm. It is in fact locked. What'd you like to do? Check for traps. 
<laughs> okay. Roll observation. Before every single step we take at this point. I feel like uh, I feel like I feel like what was that old thing with like a uh, ten foot pole? We need us a ten foot pole. Cream Abdul Jabbar, <laughs> just throw just throw an elbow one time. Just throw an elbow one time in the game, and they'll always think you'll do it. Now, just give oh, you one you shot. Go. Uh, go ahead and roll observation, Claymore. I guess if you're going up to the door. Okay. Jeff, what can we clear with bits? Uh, bits, uh, stress. Yeah. You can clear stress. Okay. So every 100 bits, you can clear. Uh, everyone can clear a point of stress. I was going to say, I need to clear my panicked because I'm at 10. Uh, so Karine gave us three earlier? 300. Early. Yeah, he gave you three. He gave 300 earlier, so you could have reduced your stress by 300. Or by three, excuse me. I'm taking that 300, man. You got to work hard <laughs> to get me back up positive. Mm -hmm. It's okay. I already killed you. He just... You're just still walking. <laughs> You're just dead man walking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, shoot, three stress is the magic number. Okay. Um, you do not see anything triggering, but it is locked, and it's got what looks like a, a heavy duty lock on it. Like it's it's looks to be industrially sealed. The like a Comtech kind of thing. It could be a Comtech. Again, it's one of those things where you can make the choice. Do you want to do Comtech to kind of screw with the panel and try to open it up that way, uh, or do you just want to brute force it open? I know which one's more fun, but this is your call, Sergeant. Let's try it the Comtech way, and if that fails, we can always go back to a brute force attempt. Uh, I know how my rifle works, but I've not a goddamn clue about a fancy door. Yeah, this is definitely Jen's area of yeah, expertise. Yeah, I'll She's give it here. a whirl and see what happens, and if not, okay, go ahead. We break it. We believe in you. Okay. One success. Yeah, it takes a little time. Uh, more than once, your you kind of the your input kind of gives error, error, and it does one of those classic things like you have like one more chance left before like system shutdown. Right before that, Barrett is going to turn to um, Yuri and say, "Yuri, hmm? were you serious about that beer? You don't ever joke about beer, all right?" <laughs> So before she does like the last attempt, like she's gonna definitely take a swig and okay, calm down a little bit, and mm -hmm. then you manage to, and you hear a, and you hear Claymore Barrett as you're standing at the door. You hear as something on the interior that was keeping this door shut has been like the clamps on the inside has been released. The door Probably opens the best up. Commanding officer ever. <laughs> door opens up. Yeah. She's all right, mother. You get a, a swift feeling of cold air uh, that just sort of, and that you guys don't really feel it too heavily, but just imagine, because you're in your suits, that a swift feeling of cold air lost <laughs> over towards you guys. <laughs> and you can see that it is absolutely dark inside. Oh, yeah. Anyone else have a light? I dropped my lamp back there in the tunnel. I'll like move in, basically have the shield out in front and kind of provide light. Okay. You look around and you can see there's a couple dozen server stacks in here. Is there one of those things you see in the movies where there's, you know, somewhere in the stack, there's the little laptop that you just pull out and there's keyboard and you can access everything. That's pretty fancy uh, for Alien Universe. Uh, but there is kind of an old school CRT console that's sitting off at the corner. <laughs> Could use that instead. But yeah, you do find it. Yeah. Just another Comtech. Uh, yeah. Does anybody want to roll observation in here? Yuri, that's your job. Huh? At all times. <laughs> She's just an observation bot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, you hear something. And you hear Yuri. You hear, you hear mother, mother, mother. I hear that. Oh wait, I'm supposed to hear it for you. Someone's saying mother. Well, and so to signal to everyone, you know, rifles back out. Yeah. 
move around and you find in the far back corner of this room after you go past a couple rows uh, into another console that's been anchored into the wall. You can see one of the Polly, the female models, kind of short, about five foot four or so, short hair, uh, synthetic model, uh, who you can tell that the skin and hair has been like peeled forward and it's kind of flapped down almost over her eyes. And so you can just see what looks like like fluffy hair and, and, and rumpled skin covering up her eyes. Uh, you can see drips of that, that white uh, blood dripping down the face. And there's these huge cables that have been plugged in to various ports in the back of her head that are now connecting to the console. Now, uh, I don't know I've seen I some, use that. Yeah, I've seen some fucked up shit in my days, but that's top of the pile right there. We, uh, get our pocket knives, cut its head off real quick before it can do anything. It does seem like that is an exposed position that we can, uh, take advantage of. Yeah, it's twitching. And you hear like, Yuri. Mother, Yuri you hear like starts, various beeps and stuff. Yeah. Yuri starts, you know, putting another uh, shell into the, her shotgun. Shame. All right. I guess I'll try and help with the decapitation. Okay. This is easy. Coup de gras. Doesn't seem to be even, you're not even sure if it's aware of your presence. <laughs> yeah. As, yeah. as you walk up and just whoosh, and you just knock the head clear. Some of the cables that it's connected to in the back of the head cling to it for a moment, and you can see like they they grow taut, and then eventually the force of the the strike kind of rip them free, and it pops, and you see all little droplets along the floor as like a soccer ball it just rolls down one of the aisles. Call. <laughs> <Yeah. Goal. laughs> <laughs> yeah. good work right there. Got a collection of Android heads today. Let's get to we it. Do. No way. One of your own, too. Yes, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Yeah. It's one uh, for three. I hope we okay. If you all want to do server stuff, I'll stay on guard at the door in here. Okay. All hey, right. I've um, done some, go I've ahead done some com techy stuff before, so I could help you. Good. Uh, yeah, just give me like one basic contact as you just start pulling pulling hard drives and servers that you think would be useful. You want to roll it, Yuri? Oh, well, I mean, I know the difference between storage space and memory. <laughs> what is uh... the difference? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that's the storage space is what some people call memory but that's like what what's actually allocated on your disk memory is what it can do at the time at like what it's thinking about at that moment kind of it's so... like having a big old desk and the bigger the desk the more papers you can fit on it but you know the person sitting at the desk how good their brain is is like a processor And like Barrett's trying to do the thing and listening to all of this, and it just—that's uh, how I'm explaining that horrible role. And storage space is how big them pull-out drawers are on your desk. You know, some only got little drawers this big, but others got this huge bucket drawers that you can just like fit a whole filing system in. Right then. Uh, roll your roll your stress. Bear it. Mm. Oh. As you start just pulling stuff. Oh gosh. <laughs> so for some reason, the stress of trying to break into this computer, I'm now taking cover. You just you just you just find a different aisle and you just lean against it, take some deep breaths. It's just not going well for Barrett. <laughs> Didn't we use the bits to clear the stress? <laughs> or did uh, she, she had already stress? I think she did that. Uh I no, I still have three stress because I thought it was per no, did you? Yeah, you could have used it then. Oh, okay. I yeah. thought someone else used it, so then mm -mm. I couldn't. No, it's for everybody. 100 bits clears one point of stress for everybody. Oh, well, then I would have had two stress. Yeah. 
So, do we just re-roll the comp tech? Or? Yeah, just re-roll it with your stress fix. That's fine. All right, sorry. Two stress, comp tech. You want to no push? successes. Push. Okay. One success. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> Take a turn, I'm not and you just go by, and you just start pulling. Pulling hard drives, pulling server, and you just go up behind Claymore and just start dropping him into his bag. Just dropping him into his bag after the other, and you get a handful of them. Yeah. Okay. Koenig, while you're out by the hall, you uh, yeah. you hear something in the elevator. You hear just like you hear like like a metallic clanking, as if it's like echoing, as if it's something either in the elevator or like in the elevator shaft. I'll give the uh, signal that we might have incoming and I'll post up rifle trained right on that elevator door. We, uh, something's coming up that shaft and it ain't in the elevator. Be ready for shit to hit the fan. Is there anywhere that we can be in this room? And not be visible so that it would appear that if they come off the elevator that they wouldn't see anything. Yeah, this. server room is huge and there's several aisles. Think of it like a grocery store. It's not that big, obviously, but it's it's quite large with several yeah. rows of servers. And the servers are quite tall. Okay, so Barrett will try to position folks so that if someone comes in, we would be able to kind of take them out quickly. But if they were just to look, it would look like everything's fine. All right. You want me Let's to fall back and close this door? Let's do that. All right. You definitely would be taking cover as well. I don't know if it, I can't remember if that's a thing or not, an alien. Yeah, you can do it. Okay. So it just I think it just increases your armor basically. Oh, okay. Um, you wait around for a moment, and you uh, you hear like grunting, Koenig. As if somebody's trying to open the elevator door from the other side. Like this, this. Uh, Sergeant, I've never heard a synth <laughs> grunt before. Oh. They're, uh, sounds like they're about to pinch a loaf with all the effort they're putting out. <laughs> it's not the elevator, it's the bathroom. <laughs> oh. Let's provide assistance then. So we're. It's we're hearing this to be a human grunting and not a okay then... i mean i don't think you can distinguish between those two things but yeah you hear a grunting you're male grunting uh claymore if you want to force the door open you're a dc you want to huh? come post up here next to me with that shotgun and if that door opens if there's something we don't like you and i are going to start shooting well what if we just what if we don't like it, but we also don't hate it? And we shoot, shoot it. Anyway. Oh, all right. If it ain't a Marine, safe here. we splatter the damn thing. Okay. I mean, what if it's a kid? We splatter that too. Oh, right, right. If it's a synth. We have our mission orders. To take right them then. Out as needed. Would we, as a group of Marines, be familiar with the chat model? Uh, no. Okay. If it's a kid, you know, something's fishy, but we'll give it the benefit of the doubt. If that's all right with you, Sergeant. That is fine. I don't personally care for killing children. Well, I agree. So Claymore, are you open the door? Yes. Okay, so you... <laughs> the door opens up and you hear ah, ah, and this you you see there's a guy. It doesn't look like the models that you've been fighting that is kind of clinging to like the interior ladder of the elevator shaft with one arm. And is was trying to like with a crowbar just open it up. And he's got what looks like almost like a like a, a white tank top, and then there's like a flannel over top of it, and then there's like another jacket. There's some kind of ICSC patch on it. It just looks like he's got like just basic clothing on. He's got a very scruffy beard, uh, 
kind of a he's got this this trucker hat that's kind of turned slightly off kilter to the side. He's like, ah, ah, and he starts to fall backwards. Hey, stop your grunting. Come with me if you want to live. There it is. You you pull him inside and he stumbles to the ground. Like, ah, ah, don't shoot me. Don't shoot me. Don't shoot me. And he got his hands hands are kind of up. He's got this kind of black tangled hair underneath the uh underneath the the cap. A gesture for everyone to lower their weapons. Oh, we like him. Who the hell are you, and how are you still alive? And he's like, yeah, I, I, I can't. Oh, my name is Bud. Uh, 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 that's who I am. How am I still alive? Um, they, uh, I don't, uh, I don't know really know the answer to the second question. Uh, they, uh, I, I, I've been here for, I, I don't even know how long I've been here. I've been here for. They've had, they put me in one of the dorms, and they locked me in, and, and. How do you feel? What's your favorite quick snack food that you cook in a microwave? <laughs> a hot, hot pocket, right? Like... All right, he's not a sin. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta get me out of here. You gotta get me out of here. You got it. Wait, wait, wait. What flavor? We're gonna fight over this. I know it. Sausage and cheese. Yep, yep. Throw them in the thing. <laughs> you just push it back. <laughs> yeah. Ham and cheese is the only option. Are you being chased at the moment? No. The, Are you being pursued? I, I, I heard, uh, I heard one of them. They, they, they usually had one in the hallways and guard in the dorms, and then I heard it move off. Uh, and, and, and I just, I took a chance. I just, I, just, I just took a chance. Good. We've taken out the one on the roof and we took out the one here in the server room that was there's connected. A, there's a radio in that, that fucking guy's office. He points over to us. I was trying to, to radio someone. Anybody, you well, know. We passed the office on the way here. It's right I fucking don't... there. And he's like pointing. It's like 10 feet away. <laughs> it's right there. We definitely... Need to keep radio silence at this point. We'll get you out of here, but I got. Uh... Yeah, we're fine. Yeah. Get out of the hallway. I, 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 my my I, I, my crew. They 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 left me here, and it was me and uh, and 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 our, and our synth. I haven't seen him, and I, I don't know. They fucking took him somewhere. They, they they they, and I thought I was dead. They fucking put a hole in me, and then they. They patched me up for some reason, and, and then I'm... I just want to get the fuck out of here. Please. So, we'll, we'll move into the other office, but Barrett is going to kind of prod a little bit further. So, you were captured. Yeah. Repaired and released? Yeah, they, they stitched me up. And then they, they've been keeping me and some others in, in the dorms. Two levels down. Or so, one level down. That's Jeff's mistake, I, not his. I have a small proposal. Just a teeny tiny nip. A nick on the tip of your finger. Just make sure that you bleed red. It's nothing personal. Yeah, look at him. Oh. You can see he's got cuts and oh, bruises okay. and stuff. <laughs> he's got blood. <laughs> I mean, There's blood. I guess <laughs> I find just want to make sure this is your blood. I mean, yeah, yeah. And he's like... He holds up. He holds up. And like he, he kind of pulls the shirt back, and you can see like there's like this, uh, the the bottom part of the the tank top, where, like where the belly is. It's just like this big brown stain with a giant hole in it. Yeah, this is where they fucking shot me. Took uh, the... maybe I need to get captured. They can patch me up too. <laughs> That's pretty bad. All right. Well, uh, you got a couple options here, bud. Stay here and hide, and we'll get you when we're done. You can tag along and show us where we need to go. Well, there's, there's, some, there's more people down there, and I think one of them, one of them went down to the lounge, and uh, uh, one of one of the 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 the, 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 the lady ones. And then uh, there's about three or four people in the dorms, and then. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. The rest of them all. 
So, uh... They've been feeding us. They, they, they fucking put, like, vending machine food underneath the freaking doors. They've been living off, like, ho-hos for God knows how long. Ho. Oh. Uh, I lived like that for a while until I got rid of my ex-wife. So I feel you right there, bud. <laughs> I was just thinking we're talking about your ex-wife, but I was too slow. <laughs> so what, what were you... We're in the office now. What are you planning to do with the radio? I was going to fucking call for help, man. Well, Ma'am. we're in the office. I was... So I'm going to look and see if the radio yeah. is functional. So, yeah, you look around. Um, you can tell that they're... Okay, it's actually kind of clean in here, but there's tons of bullet holes. Uh, And you can see that the desk has been kind of blown to shreds as if there was like a horrible firefight. Um, And there is this almost looks like a closet off to one side uh, where there's this this big console that has suffered some significant damage. Uh, You can see bullet holes and things, uh, but it doesn't look to be functional uh and then there's also this other cabinet next door that right next next to it that looks like a like a wet bar and the bottle's still intact uh yeah you go up there's some yeah there's some booze yeah there we go uh just um parrot would want to do some sort of a check to see if the radio is at all repairable uh, yeah, roll Comptic. Now I roll up. Yeah. Mm. Uh, a couple things. Um, <laughs> you notice that uh, this, with four successes, you notice that this, uh, there's, there's, this is actually like a, a signal jammer of some kind. Like you see like this, this whole separate mechanism uh, that still seems to be functional. Uh, and you also notice that it's repairable, but what's kind of curious is that it looks like it has been repaired. Like you can see like there's places where it's been patched up and, and fixed and then it's been destroyed again. You know what I mean? Like it looks like it, this is, this is, this has happened. Like, like it's been destroyed, fixed and destroyed again. It's odd. And so, uh, Barrett will turn to Bud. Did you fix this? No, 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 no. It's the first time I've been out of my room in like, I don't know, I think a month. It was fortuitous timing that this was when you made like, your escape. I'll so see what I can words. do with the radio. Some big fucking words. Did you break it? I did shoot the room up once. Uh, but that was a while back. <laughs> Maybe a few of the bullets hit it. I don't. I don't really remember. Um, we're looking. There was supposed to be uh, some Marines that landed here a while back. Any sign of them? I mean, I heard, I heard gunfire and, and shit. But I, I didn't. You know, they don't. I didn't see anybody. Like they kept me pretty well covered. But I, yeah, there was there was some gunfire a while back. Any and idea? And they used who's to be, in charge of them? Yeah. Well, there used to be a hell of a lot more of them around here too. Uh, I never tried to sneak out before, but there was just one. We um, we came across them in space. Looks like they didn't make it off the uh, platform going up. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. You got. We can. We can get off this fucking rock. You can count in the space. Ship. You got a ship. Yeah, we got a ship. We do. Our our mission is information gathering, in addition to any type of information rest. gathering. Information. Ga- okay. Well, hello. My name's fucking information. You gather me up and get me the fuck off of you. Oh, hey, information. It's nice to meet you. Uh, well, my, my name's Yuri Dees. <laughs> this is a wonderful place to start, but the thing is, saving you, it's a great way to start the day. We need to make sure that this bullshit doesn't happen again. You so know that means what? we need to take a few extra steps. We you should. know what? We never did introduce ourselves. We made him introduce himself, but uh, yeah. But Yuri Dees. Pleasure. It's pleasure. are important. 
I agree. I should be, she. There's another one in here. And he's like getting nervous. This can wait. Yeah. Can you lead us the way to where the rest of your folks were holed up? Okay. Yeah. Do it. Okay. Yeah. There's a door uh, over to the right stairs. Go down. Or we can climb down if you want. Let's, uh, let's take the stairs. Okay. Uh, where did you say that there is generally a scent patrolling these halls? Yeah. There's, there's two levels. The dorms and then there's the, the lounge. There's going to be people in the dorm. And I don't know. You might be down in the lounge. I don't know. Well, they're working off a skeleton crew. Our job just got a hell of a lot easier there, Sergeant. Agreed. All right. Let's take the halls. Okay. Yeah. All right. Wait. Going to be like a sneaky, sneaky snake. Just come up behind him. Clock him in the head. Okay. Um, yeah, you uh, you go down to the the next level. Doors open relatively easily. They're locked, but they're easy. They're just basic mechanical locks. You just kind of like put the put the riot shield into them. And they pop open. Second level, no one there. There's you can see there's a handful of doors, and one of them's open. Uh, any points like that, 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 that? That's my room. And then there's like all these others, and, and there's, I, I don't know how many of them have people. Some of them might. I just fucking wanted to get to the radio. That's all. And I don't even have a fucking suit. I can't even go outside. I have no idea what Bud's voice was like, by the way. So this is just how it is in my memory. Uh, I it, it was a lot like Matt's voice, because uh, Matt famously says, I've got two voices. Southern and very Southern. <laughs> oh, gee. <laughs> um, but you start popping open doors along the way, and yeah, they're dorm, like they're bed, you know, bunk bed types. You can see in a great deal of disarray. Some of them, you look with signs of struggle. Some of them have blood on the ground, broken beds, etc. You open a door, and at one point, as you bust it open, Claymore, someone leaps out and just kind of like ricochets off your riot shield. <laughs> and you can see there's a woman who just kind of backs away. She's got this tangled, like dirty blonde hair. It looks nothing like the synth that you've seen thus far. And uh, she just uh, kind of huddles down in the corner, like, "Oh God, oh God, you, 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 you're here to save us. You save us." Looks back to confirm with. <laughs> What's yes. <that>? No. <laughs> you will not believe me later. It's gonna be a really bad day for you, but it's gonna get better by the time it's over. Okay. 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 Master Sergeant Barrett, uh, were you here with the? Uh, did you come here with Bud? No. 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 I. I. I worked here. I worked here. For, for two years. That's good news. Who's currently in charge of the facility? The, 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 I fucking uh, androids. I just... Is there a way to shut them all down, nice and easy? No. No. They. They don't work like that. All right. Fall in behind us. Stick with Bud. Okay. We'll get you all out of here before this is over. Or we're all going to die a bloody death. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't plan on that. I don't, I don't plan on doing that. And as long as you're with me, then you should be all right. My name ain't Yuri D. Salesworth. Okay. She looks to like one of the others. Is that her name? Is it, her that's, name. That's Yuri. Okay. Okay. You guys go down to like the next floor, and you find like there's there's one. You know, like you go through the doors. Same same thing. You go through a couple of the rooms. You find two more people. Uh, one of them, like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, uh, I worked here. The other one says, uh, yeah, "I was a it's a fucking 
was a fucking shuttle shuttle pilot. Uh, and this is like this kind of heavy set African American woman, kind of hair kind of all kind of frizzled up a bit. And uh, yeah, uh, uh, Hazel. And uh, Hazel. Yeah. And I brought some fucking shithead here, little shit. We. Is he still alive? Well, it sucks to be him. Good job for you. Fall in line. We're gonna keep moving. Okay. <laughs> go down to the. You go down to like the the lobby area. You hear like music, playing from inside the lobby. You get you get down the staircase. I'm gonna take you to a map. So I'm, really, I'm really proud of this one. I That's really a good cool. sign. Ah, no, 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 no. It's just it's just so really proud. Uh huh. Yeah, it's a totally good fine. sign. It's, it's a proud sign, it's not just, a good sign. It's, it's sure. You, you, you guys are gonna like this. You're gonna like this because you make maps for places where things don't happen. You're gonna like this it's, one. This one's good. It's a dance party. This one's good. This There's one's music. good. There's music. Dancing. This one's good. This one's good. Right. Boots and pants. Boots and pants. Boots and pants. So who we got? We got. Let's see. Zoe's not with us. All right. So Koenig, you're there. Barrett, you're there. And Claymore, you're there. All right. So let me activate this. All right. Ooh. You're going to like this one. You're going to like this one. Ooh, that is a pretty cool looking picture uh, for Barrett. Oh, yes. That's. Okay. Oh, dark. So you pop down. Don't worry about that one stray person off to the south. That's just me getting my prep ready. Mm -hmm. I think okay. that's where I'm also at. Uh, you should be. You should have control of. I think you have control of the crew chief now, don't you? Oh, there I am. Hello. Your dice is her name, right? <laughs> you could. I, I, I'm, yeah. I'm pronouncing it that way just because it's. I was typing it up. It's like, yeah, dice. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay. So you guys just come down this staircase here. You look off to your left. You can see that there's this elevator. Straight ahead, there's a set of double doors. Uh, who's got the light? Not me. I got a shoulder light. All right. Let me set you guys up with this. Same. Looks like it's built in on the... Oh yeah, it's built in on your on your weapon. Yeah. Okay. There you go. High beam shoulder lamp. All right. So you guys see off to your left, there's there's this elevator door, and you see straight ahead, there's this set of double doors. And you look all around on the ground, there is like just stained flooring, just like pools and pools of just stained flooring. Like you can tell, it's like brownish red, months, weeks old. And there's this, this set of double doors. You can see there's some damage to them. And you can hear through the doors, you can hear kind of the faint sound of music. Um, who wants to do the special honors? Open one of these up. Hey, wait a minute. Y'all remember Abbott listening to music? Did he ever do that? No. Oh, he tried to listen to my headphones once. I kicked him. <laughs> oh, well, that, I mean, that's just like any other day. But... All right. That's kind of weird hearing music. Why don't we hear? But what happened here? That's where I got fucking shot. Kind of points down to the ground. I think that's me. I think that's a little bit of me over there, too. Well, it's impressive that you're still here. I'll give you that. Why don't we do a good old fashioned breach? One of us opens the door, two of us toss them grenades we found in. Just in case it's. Do you. <laughs> I feel like we're repeating a lizard. previous. <laughs> Someone's going to lose so... an arm in a second. It's going to happen. <laughs> so, but who did you say was inside here? One of the fucking things that came down here. Okay. 
just wanted to make sure we weren't taking out. Did we see lights underneath the doors? Yeah, like those red emergency lights, but nothing more. Okay. I'll, I'll breach the door, but Mom Bay, I just want to double check. Do you want me to toss the grenade without looking, or do you want me to give visual confirmation first? <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've got this strange feeling of deja vu. Oh, <laughs> There's good. a right answer and a wrong answer. <laughs> Barrett's confirmed with Bud that there shouldn't be any friendlies here, so go ahead and toss. Toss first, assess second. Okay. Right. Guess who doesn't wait? <laughs> okay. So you... You go ahead and you breach the doors mm -hmm. and you chuck a grenade inside. Do you close the doors back up? Yes. Okay. <laughs> doors close back up. You wait a couple moments and <laughs> you hear a huge explosion from inside. Let's move. And then, yeah, hustle in while hopefully whoever's in there is either dead or very disoriented. Roll your, roll your damage for your grenade. Oh. Grenade do even. Uh-oh. It should be in there. It should be listed. Okay. Is it just the regular... Uh, it's the M4... Yeah, just the ATDP grenade. Uh, yeah, damage, damage is nine. nine. basically just rolled 9d6. Yeah. Okay. Roll... D six. <laughs> and... Just said you killed Marshall. I oh, probably no. did. That's what I'm so worried about. Uh, only two. Only two points of damage. Okay. Was that ten altogether? Uh, for grenades. No, I got two successes. Grenades got a damage of nine. Blast power nine plus two. Yeah. Uh, okay. You go inside. So you open the door. Okay. I presume, right? Yes, yeah. we did. Okay. And you see laying on the crown. Oh, shit. In a big pool of white blood, you see one of those paw models just on the nice. ground. Just <laughs> fucking exploded. Hey. Twitching to mother. Pop Mother. goes the weasel. <laughs> Mother. Again, it keeps like it's talking about mother. But I don't you hear... like talking about mother stuff. I have issues. Be quiet. <laughs> yeah, but you, you still hear coming from inside this sound. Like, this is where I said I was playing with the ambient stuff for Foundry. So if you like. Oh. So as you come in. You can see that this is a lounge area. Imagine that, by the way, that those that those tables have exploded. I didn't realize you're going to throw a grenade in first, so I didn't have <laughs> more damage. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you there's tables just blown to shreds everywhere, absolutely blown to shreds everywhere. Um, you can see a pool table off uh, to the east side of the room. There's a handful of uh, what look like. Uh, there's a jukebox over by the pool table and a handful of other like arcade game type things. Uh, you can see off to the uh, the west side of the room. You can see that there's like a darkened kitchen area. You're seeing this glow from the northwest side of a TV that's constantly static. You can see what looks like an emergency light and a set of exterior doors or a door that seems to be going uh, kind of indicating kind of goes down to the tunnel. It says tunnel access over top of it. But yeah, he's just laying on the ground in a pool, just twitching. Um, I want to move over and check out that kitchen area because I don't have full line of sight. So I'll okay. move over, make sure we're clear in the room. Okay. Roll observation. Yeah. Ugh, I'll push. Okay. Yep. No success. Yeah, oh, no. you're clear. Uh, Karayan, the uh, the Paul model android that they got with the grenade is on the ground just twitching and talking to Mother. Ma'am, do you want me to just make him shut up? 
Um, Do you want me to rip its head off too? I'm wondering if there's a way that we can try to gather any information about other or mother's orders, or can I try to do a contact to talk to it? Sure. Hey, let me help you out with that. So, uh, try and assist with the uh, uh, okay. repairing of the synth. Okay. So, the two of you kneel down and you start trying to do your best to, to gain access. Go ahead and roll your contact. Uh, that's not with anything extra added. Okay. Oh. We can roll a... Yeah, contact. Sorry, I like play I like playing with the uh the ambient noise. Uh okay. Oops. Oh you uh, someone typed it out and it zoomed in. It's weird. So as you're doing that <laughs> and as you're off on the other side of the room, Koenig, what you guys don't notice is crawling out from underneath the pool table. Like like the woman from the ring. Why are people typing? It's just moving all over. This is so cool. Uh <laughs> Let me tell you about my next one. <laughs> Crawling out from underneath the uh, the pool table, like the like in the ring when she crawls out of the TV. Basically, there's this like you already see she's taking some damage, but one of those poly models uh, pops out. You can see she's taking some explosion damage, uh, and so because you guys failed on that uh, observation, she's going to leap out. Uh, Claymore, roll an observation test. I'll give you a chance at this. Uh, Abbott and okay. Barrett, you're too busy kind of fixing this thing. Koenig, you're on the other side of the room and you failed your observation anyway. Yeah. Uh, but Claymore, why don't you go ahead and roll? Got a success. Okay. Nice. You hear at the last second as she leaps out, like like just le- like she she crawls out from the shadows underneath this pool table and just launches herself at you, Claymore, and you're able to just barely in time kind of turn you around. And uh, let me go ahead and just do initiative really fast for this one. This shouldn't take long. <laughs> just stay. This should take long. Shouldn't take long. Then we'll get out of here for tonight. Give me one. Uh, see if I if I if I control this one, you can hear like the ambient music playing from the jukebox. And if you get closer to the TV, you can hear static from the TV. And in the kitchen, there's a drip. There's like also, I'm, I'm, I don't know. Just, I just, cool. oh shit, you can't. Right? Put yourself in the kitchen cool. really quick. Here, I, I got to control them so they can hear it, but. Yeah, there it is. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Right? And then if you go over towards like the, you get static. And the closer you get, right. it's so cool. Like there's just fun, fancy things you can do on Raspberry. Sorry, I got it. I just, I like awesome. playing with toys. So let me go ahead and roll this initiative. Um, this one's dead. Uh, you're a dece. Uh, I'm gonna say that you, Koenig, and Barrett, we're gonna treat this kind of like a like a surprise round where you guys don't really see it, but Claymore, you did see. So I'm gonna let you go as you're able to like just turn around just as she launches herself at you. What do you want to do? I'm gonna crush the skull. Do it. This time I'm gonna actually use the inventory item. Yeah. Oh, scary. Uh, Nothing. What? How did you not roll any successes? God, push that. He's only good at stuff when he has one die to roll. I know. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so the stu- you're doing your stun baton. Yeah. Okay. All right. I mean, I figure that's kind of what I've had out. Yeah, if makes I sense. Get the- yeah. And in theory, I'm really good with it. So I think, wish Matt was here. Matt would know. So, Good question. Uh, stun. Don't you like lose? Do you lose your fax action, or you lose your slow <sighs> action? I'm trying to remember. God dang. I'll look it up while I'm you're doing terrible stuff. Terrible at this. Uh, but um, but what's your total damage? Uh, just one. Okay. All right. So you reach back, you swat at her with this uh, with this stun baton. She does take a hit. You see her start to kind of shock a bit. Uh, just trying to check. 
Anyone who is hit by a stun baton takes one or more points of damage, must make an immediate stamina roll, which she failed. Or be stunned for a round. Of course, it doesn't say what stun does. I could have sworn you lose an action. Yeah, it loses your next action. Uh, so, it doesn't say fast or... I don't remember. Uh, I'm going to say just because you guys have had a bad night. Uh, she, you just turn back. You you hit her. And she, and she just kind of gets caught up in the uh, in the damage. And that's her turn. Uh, and so now we'll go ahead <laughs> and begin the full round. With Eurydice, you can now do stuff. As you right, Eurydice sees what uh, um, uh, Claymore did. So she'll stop what she's doing. She'll grab the, um, the shotgun, and she'll come over and she'll say, "It's it's slam and blam, and I helped okay. fire." So still kind of still kind of stuck in that stun moment. Go ahead and make your attack. Okay, uh, and I will use the item. There you go. Uh, two points. Okay, so a total of four points of damage. I assume you're using all that for damage. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, she has not gone down yet, uh, but she does not look good as there's a fairly large hole in the side of her body <laughs> where her her hip used to be. Uh, <laughs> uh, then it's going to be... Yeah, she doesn't look good at all. Uh, Koenig, you're up. You're on the other side of the room. Uh, but you can see the scrap going on. There's a lot of people around her. What would you like to do? I'll take aim. Okay. And then shoot. Take aim and shoot. Go ahead. So I get a plus two for taking aim and a minus two for my mm -hmm. panic. Nice. Uh, three. I'll dump that all into damage. So all right, let me go ahead and roll. Uh, is that four damage? That's armor piercing, so half armor. Uh, she actually doesn't have this is she she looks to be in basic clothing no okay. no armor on this one the other one looked to have been using some like marine gear up up on the roof okay uh this one as you fire uh severe chassis breach as you manage to just get her right through center mass and the organs just erupt outwards backwards onto the pool table hey uh, that happened to me <laughs> Com completely immobilized so basically can't move uh still kind of like thrash around but can't like um all right so then <laughs> move it around uh claymore your turn right oh going to statistically like I know I should use the baton because it gives, it, it gives me like a bonus dice, but I'm not going to. Mm -hmm. Like if it's flailing near the thing, I'm going to try and just give it a big boot. Or if it comes close to the edge of it, I'm going to see if I can basically do the equivalent of a curb stomp into the edge. Do it. The pool table. Yeah, I love it. Do it. Uh, so I'll just roll raw close combat then. Yeah, roll, roll close combat. And I'll give you like, you know, take like a plus two for this because she's already in significantly, she's immobile. So it's easy to sort of shove her down. Did it roll? I don't think it did. Let's try that again. Nice. Right. There we go. Uh, push that. Yeah, do you want to push that? No. And <laughs> as you... Nice. There you go. Describe yeah. how it looks to end the night here. What's the last image we're left on? There will be like the initial push with the, the shield to get it into position. And then just as the head gets near the edge of the pool table, just this giant boot comes up and then splatters its head. And so as the uh, as the synth falls, you guys take, kind of take stock, you start looking around, looking underneath all the tables, looking at all the vents. Room is clear. Good. But, oop, wrong one. There, that's the wrong one too. There we go. But as you, uh, as we're kind of convinced that you've cleared the room, check your corners, doors, etc., you get here like, Zoe, get on the the radio a little bit. Uh, Master Sergeant, we got ourselves a problem down here at the uh, at the factory, and I'll go ahead and say we'll end there, and uh, we'll pick up in a couple weeks, hopefully with Matt and Jen, and we can do a, a full proper 
Proper session. Nice. That was scary. I thought you guys were so screwed. <laughs> oh, my oh, gosh. Man. We found it started Bud. rough. Yeah, we found yeah. Bud. That's awesome. Found Bud. That, I'm excited about that. Found Bud. I Does was Matt... sincerely worried that I might have blown up Marshall for just a split <laughs> second. I know. <laughs> like, you see in front of you, like, get to it. What do we see? <laughs> Like, will Matt have the option of music? picking up Bud instead of a Marine? Yeah. Yeah, I have a couple options for Matt if he wants it. Uh, if we would have gotten further, there was, you know, there might have been some other options as well. There's also like a backup Marine. There's there's you know, there's a total of 10 people on the ship. And one of them is a completely, is a, is a Marine I haven't done anything to. So it could literally is a blank slate for first to die. Because I figure the first to die kind of sucks. So you get like first dibs on making whatever you want. Nice. Uh, so there's that, and then there, everybody else, like like Adam taking over Eurydice, uh, sh- you know, she's everyone's a marine. Like they all got a marine, the, like the marine starting skills and stuff like that. I've just given, you know, just sort of made like a like a support mm-hmm. service. Like I think she's specifically the um, the crew chief version, uh, but she's effectively your roughneck. So I think she's the crew chief, um, and then there's the pilot uh lewis forrester uh if you watch some of our other shows you you know the reference uh but yeah uh but that's it uh let's do another round table here so we can end the night uh while i look up to see who we could possibly raid so chuck what's going on with defenders this week big week big week so every night on defenders well not every night wednesday thursday friday on defenders come check us out at uh wednesday we're kicking off new pathfinder 2 campaign the uh, Fallen Kingdom of Ruse. Check out Jeff and Jeremy and that. Uh, Thursday night, Watercolors and Warriors, our Ghibli-inspired 5th Ed campaign. Friday night, uh, we're going to do a, be, uh, be doing basic fantasy role-playing game. And then this Saturday at 1 p.m. Central, uh, we'll be back at Forbidden Land. So uh, Jeff, Melissa, Adam, I'll be back at it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Speaking right. of Adam, what's up? What you got? Oh, same thing I had at the beginning. Um, we're really proud of this. It's our first uh, product that uh, we made since the restructuring of Grim Perilous Studios, and it is the uh, Cambion. It is uh, a new ancestry for uh, Zweihander RPG. If you'd like to play something that is demon inspired, demon infused, chaos born um there's some pretty cool abilities in there and uh it's available on drive through rpg awesome uh and jeremy got anything yeah i mean i'm I'm partial to that that same cambian bit as well and uh on the side note uh, if you enjoy comics uh there's an independent artist who's putting out black blizzard on kickstarter it's already been fully funded the first one's being sent out to get some test copies printed and second and third are underway (laughs) <laughs> okay perfect <laughs> Melissa cheats her she totally does uh and for matt uh, old matty two arms couldn't be with us tonight uh but uh he will be <laughs> on carmelette games <laughs> tomorrow night uh hopefully we're in deadlands thursday uh we're doing blades in the dark i don't know what he's doing he's got something else on sunday on free league publishing check him out for that uh nothing for me i haven't it's it's Jeff's Jeff's not a good person. Jeff did it. I should probably do that. Jeff mm-hmm. did it. Jeff did it. There we go. Yeah. Uh, and then for us, we'll be back for Delta Green, Melissa and I, on Friday as we're continuing Impossible Landscapes where things are going crazy. Wills Without Number on Saturday. And then big, big thing, next Monday, uh, we're starting up a new game here. Uh, we're going to get the old things from the Flood crew back, and we're going to be playing some Ultraviolet Grasslands, uh, starting up Session Zero-ish, Character Creation, Caravan Creation, and a little bit of play. Uh, so come check that out. Lots of fun Oregon Trail slash psychedelic romp, psychedelic romp through uh, the wasteland area. Should be fun. Uh, and yeah, I think I gave. I think everyone has one. I think Adams was something with a rock. There it is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Adam throws a rock. Goes, yeah, and most of does shit board games. Doesn't help her though. Doesn't help her. It does me no good. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go ahead and raid. Looks like Dork Tales are up, so we're gonna go ahead and give them a raid because we did it last time. They're doing Icewind Dale and Rhyme of the Frost Maiden, and we love Rhyme of the Frost Maiden here. So it's amazing. It's amazing. So mm-hmm. have mm-hmm. a good night, everybody. Thanks for hanging out, <laughs> and uh, we'll see you next time. Take the raid. Night.